starting. I'm oh, sorry, Golden Boy. Look at that. No, no problem. I, I really like talking about Valorant, so I tend to go on for like a really long time. Anyway, the point that I was trying to make is this team, Gaskin, they have to try and trade better for one another. That's how you win in games like these. Yeah, you need those trades, and there was too many times in that replay where the trades didn't happen, but... Two early frags for 100 Thieves sees them with the man advantage here on this B site, but it's going to be somewhat of a retake. But the spike being planted inside is never a good place to plant it. It's very difficult to hold post plant, very difficult to hold those angles. And it means that 100 Thieves now are going to find phase in maybe slightly more unorthodox positions, as actually I think maybe we might see something a little bit different here. Yeah, and just so that everyone knows as well, uh, 100 Thieves are going to be on the attack right yeah. now. So that graphic will be flipped up. So don't worry about that. We'll get that adjusted in just a moment here. Clean shot with the classic there from Zachary. But the trade comes in instantly there, or the refrag, I should say. Pride was in an answer back state. Now it's just going to be Rockets left alone. And 100 Thieves already going to be starting off quite nicely off the backs of Pride and Hiko. Yeah, I was just about to correct myself. So thanks for jumping in. I mean, 100 Thieves with a, a risky plant inside, but yes, okay, it's difficult post plant when you are putting it there. But at the same time, you are at less risk from being killed. And because it's a pistol around, it's like a little bit more difficult to be banged through that wall. Yeah, 100 Thieves with this lead should confidently get this round two. And I want to see what's in the playbook for 100 Thieves. They've got the Viper yet yeah, again. Loving this. I want to see someone who's confident on the Viper, someone who puts the time in consistently across maps so that you know your lineups, you know exactly what you can do, and see what you can do with a Viper's Pit. Because ever since the changes, I really feel like Viper's Pit is a very, very strong ultimate ooh, in the ooh. right hands as Hiko just finding two players pushing. But at least they push together. I'm happy. Happy to see they're trying to trade out kills. Yeah, unfortunately, it went right into that glitch pop bulldog. <laughs> that thing was just vomiting out colors. <laughs> and it ended up freaking out amazingly for Hiko. Last two players are going to be left alive. It's Zachary and Corey inside of Lamps. Horrible. Valiate just going to cut this side off. Yeah, there's just no angles for them to work with. They both have shorties. So what are their legitimate options here it's basically null and void at this point they smoked them out they've cleared site completely it's like okay well uh, i guess we'll just go ahead and put this down right in the open i mean what are they gonna do i'm gonna guess actually phase will be pretty happy the hundred thieves came all the way back to a site they were probably True. sitting in lamps thinking no one's gonna come to this site now after getting those picks over towards b now they're just waiting back to back at this point Hoping that someone's going to wander on into lamps. Maybe one of them could push out in a little bit. And maybe 100 Thieves will run away from this spike too early. Highly unlikely. But at least I'm going to give some sort of hypothetic remark. But now they've got information that one player is in lamps. And a smoke will just ensure that there's going to be no sort of weirdness here. As they push back out and make sure they get away from the spike. Yep. And well, hey. I guess uh, Hiko was probably going to trade that gun out anyway. <laughs> Four kills for Hiko. Round he, two. He, he, he could have got thieves. away and they would have both died to the spike. It's not matchmaking now, Hiko. It doesn't matter about your rank, all right? You don't need the kills. Uh, but he's up to six. And uh, yeah, it means he buys up the Phantom and it means this is a far more healthy buy. I mean, this third round is still going to be a bit weird in Valorant. It always has been. I talk about it every time, but their buy looks a lot better now as they are all at least buying the one SMG. But it's going to be easier for them to combat this full buy round from phase. They're not going to be carrying over three or four SMGs like we see so often. Some dark cover sent out toward Garden to break up any of that vision as they don't have to worry about anyone poking on B long but they're going to do the job and clear it out meanwhile on the opposite end the boom bot was used and didn't locate anybody smoke's now going to be out in play here and more scouting out for 100 thieves just checking through the site no one was going to be to their immediate left and Nothing that they could possibly see in the right side here. Marv has this angle, and now as all this has kind of gone down, they're like, well, I think we could just go ahead and make this over toward A site. And they've split this up. 
Hiko on the flank just waited for Corey. He's so far into the B site now. And <laughs> it's just Hiko playing mind games. Oh, no. Oh, good shots from Marv. We'll keep this one alive here for FaZe. And the mind games might actually come to an end for Hiko here in the back of B Hall. Baby Babe they was called out. Oh. Uh, no, he did not see him. But Marv is actually going to be right behind both of them, hearing all of these movements, all the shakeups here. And there it goes Marv, oh, but doesn't get the next kill. Now, that kill could have been massive for them. Only player left alive, though, will be Hiko. The spike is available, so he could plant this one off. No, and time, I... Surely. He doesn't have time. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, no, he doesn't. I mean, that's one of those instances where it's very rare you are going to teleport that late as an omen, so he probably just wasn't aware of the amount of time it was going to take for him to get out of the teleport mode. Um, I respect the play, just not quick enough to be able to make that decision. And it means that FaZe will get their first one on the board, and Marv just holding really well there in hookah. I don't know if 100 Thieves realized that there was going to be someone that close. They probably thought B-Side was maybe a little bit more free for the taking after Hiko had so successfully been able to worm his way behind them on elbow. But did you see how much of A-Site was covered up by the toxic screen and bubble as well from Viper? Like, those mm -hmm. are what the brimstone smokes offer, but you can only do it once. The Viper could do that over and over and over again. Yeah, constantly cutting up the site and then what are your realistic options at that point it's it's just endless amounts of distraction and blocking i mean even right there right that whole side of the map now is just going to be completely cut off and there's just there's nothing baby bay could do he just has to wait and hope that that wall doesn't come down at the worst possible time and a player is going to be staring right down the barrel right at him there goes another wall. I think they did spot out Valier. Taking out the Viper would be great here. Valier gets all the way to the defender side of the map, and he will headshot Zachary, who was completely unaware, gets caught out. Spike still not down, though. A 3v2 in favor of FaZe. Sova's going to be all the way at the B site. Brimstone playing by the defender side. And then it's just Baby Bay who's far out. So the A site has been cleared and they will get this spike down with plenty of time remaining. Lines out towards short, just in case anyone's going to be there as he peeked out of his dark cover. And now he can get control of lamps here. These are the power positions they're going to need in this post plant. They've got lamps and they've got bathrooms. So that means they've got two positions they can wide peek from after that spike's been tapped. Of course, Lamps is going to be the first place that is usually checked. So Hiko is going to be under fire first and foremost. They got to make a move. They well, got to make a move made. and they do it. Ooh, the nick of time too, man, because I was getting a little worried that they were going to be taking too much time to try and clear things out. But really, the retake, quite, quite clever uh, to kind of give them sight control and then just pincer her in. But had Hiko gotten the eyes on Baby Bay, that was just a matter of timing that it worked out for Baby Bay. I don't know yeah, if you remember, but he was by short, and a second earlier, Hiko would have seen him. Yeah. I mean, it was difficult for 100 Thieves. Both of them decided not to go for the late peak onto Spike. Instead, they both went for an aggressive stance. One pushed out of bathrooms, the other one pushed kind of towards short, and they showed themselves and left themselves vulnerable from multiple angles. And I don't know whether that was just because of the sheer lack of information they had on where FaZe were pushing from, so they felt like they had to be proactive rather than reactive, so I can understand why they've done it. Uh, but FaZe will take advantage of their proactive way of pushing out of those certain areas, and now it looks like it's going to be a B push Ooh. from 100 Thieves. fat shock dart, by the way, to just weaken the Viper and the Rays. Corey, though... Takes out Valiate with some explosions. Venerated's going to get the better of Raucus there. Corey oh. does drop down. That's four. Does he get the ace? So only one player going to be left alive. It's Hiko. Teleports out and will hightail it out of there to the A site. And should be able to get this spike down to give him some extra cash to play around with for this next round. Uh, the grabbing the orb will give time for FaZe to at least get onto site to maybe deny the plant. But at least the dark cover will give him enough cover funnily enough, to actually get away and at least get the plant. That's going to be an extra 300 for the team, so he's done his job. 
Now can he do a little bit of damage to the economy? It's going to be a very difficult round to win. As the satchels Ooh. start to come out. Of course, those satchels don't do as much damage anymore. Blast pack has been nerfed. And Hiko, high telling it out of there, knows he's not going to be able to win the round. Corey's on the hunt. Keep running. Uh. Oh. Oh. Just missed him. Just missed him. But, yeah, now phase at 3-2. This is the first lead that we're seeing for them. Bind has clearly been working out better in this instance than uh, Ascent did. I'm, I, I will chalk that up so that the defensive side, like them playing on defense first, will give them that comfort of knowing like, hey, they're, they're going to have to come to us. They are going to have to make the place and they can kind of play around that. But you won't always have that luxury. And as it was clearly evident on Ascent, they struggled to be able to just win anything on the attack. I mean, Bind is going to be the majority of teams' most played map. I mean, like, even if it's just True. your individual games when you're playing ranked and whatnot, every team should know roughly how to play Bind, especially all the default setups. So defensively, FaZe are looking a lot more comfortable than they did on Ascent already. And I mean, even though I like what 100 Thieves have to offer on the attack here with the, the Toxic Screen and the, the bubble from Viper, they haven't really actually followed through with it. And I wonder whether that's because of the, the Cypher Traps that have been on A site. We'll see whether they do something here. Lamps is what they have to worry about first and foremost. Think about it like this. He, if he gets... If he plays talk screen on a site constantly, which is what he has been doing, uh, that will always put the fear in this team that there could be a push coming from uh, coming from Hundred Thieves on A. Right? They will always be able to block vision and cut off this map yet again. Right? Now they now they could just freely get on, on onto this. Well, heaven isn't going to be exposed. And look at Valiate there getting nice and aggressive. There goes the showstopper, but your boy Dre. Comes out with no show being stopped today. Spike is down now. Okay, so with the res coming into play, they might be able to respond and get this one right back in their favor. But a kill coming in for Pride and also forcing players back. Rock has still managed to get one within all of that commotion. He's going to be the last player left alive. The Molly might try and slow things down. It is not going to be burning him because he missed where that Molly could land. And Pride will just walk away with the gun here at the end of the round phase. They go up by two. Pride just reacting a little bit late with the orbital strike there. Tried to go for yeah. the reaction onto the res, but it wasn't quick enough. And it meant that FaZe still had the man advantage. I mean, when you get the spike down and you've got orbital strike and the molly, you desperately want to get offsite as a brimstone. And unfortunately, when you've only been able to gain control of lamps and then your viper goes down, you don't have the exit strategy because you can't put that toxic screen back up. You can't get up short. And it meant that they were all kind of clustered around the plant area, around default and in lamps at the same time. I really want to see like a full on A execute from 100 Thieves, but they haven't really gone for it yet. Like Viper screen, plus you get the Brimstone smokes. We are going to see Viper's pit popped over towards A here. So Stopper's now, of course, going to. Oh, blow up, venerated on B-Long. Oh, no. And then the screen is down, or the snake bite, Viper's Pit, whatever reference you want to call it, that thing is down. They're just, they're, they have managed to just nullify that entire play. So this is going to look a little tough here. 400 Thieves. I mean, you the almost named has been stopped. every ability before you got to Viper's Pit, which is what's impressive. If I'm going to be completely honest, it just shows you like, the I, sheer I amount of knowledge you have. Ooh, okay, Hiko. okay, Hiko. I okay. see you. We're, they're right back in this game. So even though they lost Valiate early on, your boy Dre gets a kill on the Corey. Now, 2v2. Rockets on high. He is familiar with the fact that your boy Dre should be there. At least one player should be there. Spike is going to go down. And Marv knows that it will be right inside of the dark cover. No real options there for Marv. And your boy Dre is waiting for the drop down. Oh, 
Doesn't pick him off in midair. That would have been a nasty shot if that's the case here. But a 1v1 as both players are going to be playing Ring Around the Rosie here by the L-Box. Dre waiting, playing the angle, but it's Raucous with the headshot and gets the fifth round win for FaZe. I mean, that spot in L-Box is one of the most difficult positions to try and play yourself out of because you leave yourself vulnerable from both angles. The player rotating round from... The defender side is in such an advantageous position that FaZe should be able to pick that one up. And, I mean, it was a round that they almost threw away, if I'm completely honest. Hiko went a little bit nuts on, to, on towards short. But this looks like a different phase. Uh, they, uh, and again, this could come down to them defending first, like you're saying, just having a little bit more confidence about themselves and maybe just a bit more familiarity on bind, which questions my pick on Ascent, but... Maybe they knew that it was going to be a bind pick from 100 Thieves and they were more than comfortable with bind being the second map. Maybe this is a long game from FaZe. Who knows? Fair enough. Let's not get ahead of ourselves quite yet, though. Ascent did not go favorably for FaZe, and that was partly because they were just completely outplayed on their attack. Yep. That is where this Viper pick could actually be more successful. So the fact that they have been able to get a few rounds here might actually be the plus. Now there's that execute that you were hoping for, blocking off, using the poison cloud, the tox screen as well. But Zachary on to Valiate. Here comes the orbital strike though, forcing players back. No kills quite yet though. And Zachary does leave the showers and will get right inside. He doesn't hit those shots because he was gonna be behind that box. Your boy Dre now has showers control, but oh dear, Zachary with the pre-fire. Tags up your boy Dre to 65 HP. Now that they've executed on the site, their only oh. option is to go over toward B, which they do manage to do so. A few kills are going to be exchanged, and the spike is planted, leaving only one player left alive. It's Zachary. So while it was looking great for FaZe at the start, it is all kind of crumbled down here. Zachary will be a little healthy. One player, 400 thieves, dangerously weak, but it's okay because Venerated is there to plug him with. The R. I mean, even though Venerated will take the headlines for that round, it's so much on Pride winning that 1v1 uh, on the Brimstone True. to ensure that it wasn't going to be a multiple spray down on that B site. But great recognition of the large rotation from FaZe and 100 Thieves saying, look, let's teleport now. Let's try and take advantage of maybe a weak B site. And that they did. And actually, just the one player waiting at A site, the fact that your boy Dre was there for so long in bathrooms, it meant that FaZe were hesitant to send everyone towards that B site, and it meant that there was always going to be a chance for 100 Thieves to take control of it comfortably. And now they make this 5-3. If 100 Thieves can start to string together some on the board here, then I think you're right. FaZe's attacking side is really where we're going to start to ask the questions. Viper creates so much chaos. I mean, just look, look at, at all it. of this coverage. <laughs> yeah, like what... There's just so much visual clutter that your options are gonna, just going to be very limited. Baby Bay, though, doing the job inside of the lamps. Unfortunately for Raucous, he will not succeed. Venerated will get the better of him there in that op battle towards short. Spike is down. The wall is played. Venerated watching the flank and backs away right at the worst possible moment here. And will also pay for that one with his life. Hiko looking to pop up potentially behind oh, on the defender side so he will go for the widest of flanks here and i think no zachary zachary did not hear he so he's going to be creeping around and they will be expecting this last player left alive but the plan is going to start to come in here they think they did manage to get that to around halfway and they're going to continue to bait this one out hiko dancing around this box here needs to get this shot off but marv and Corey held this <laughs> he held on it was like no way he was going to let that one go See, this is the same reason why sometimes getting offsite is a brimstone and going for that molly play it can be detrimental to the team. Even though Hiko got offsite and he's got the flank, if he's holding a crossfire with someone there, are they going to be more successful in taking a, a two versus two or a two versus one or two versus three? Uh, I know he was in a quite a vulnerable spot and they didn't gain control of lamps. That was really where the failure was for that attack for 100 Thieves. Viper going down and not being able to take control of lamps just meant that they didn't have the Viper up for one. But also, with lack of control of lamps means that they're all stuck in one position. That is the only downside to this attack from 100 Thieves, is they're not really pushing lamps heavy enough. 
They've got all the smokes that are covering the site, but they're not even be able to get the plant down comfortably because Lamps hasn't been taken control of. And it's also kind of shocking too, because with a raise, you would think that they might be able to force them out of it. But that ends up not being the case here. Now the action unfolds onto the B side. Oh, they do manage to get this spike down here. Raucous on the outside. It is a pistol round, and Hiko's gonna pop up behind Raucous, who is expecting someone to be wrapping around the elbow. Baby Bay, though, waiting for him. The orbital strike comes out. Baby Bay has to abandon ship. We'll get out of there. While that's going on, though, the only player that's left gonna, left alive, excuse me, is gonna be Valiate. The spike is being diffused, and he will hightail it out of there with that pop. Corey's on the hunt. Doesn't want him to let, get away with that weapon, but I think he's just gonna have to accept the reality of the situation that he will accomplish that mini task that he set out for himself there. I mean, for all the chaos that 100 Thieves have been able to provide on each site, they just haven't been able to get into the comfortable post-plant positions. I know that that was a weak buy for them, and Hiko did pretty well to at least make something of it. They got onto the site successfully. If they can do that same thing, but with guns, then there's no reason why they can't pick up a fourth and maybe a fifth. If this goes to 9-3 to phase, then they give themselves a really good chance of with, with the pistol of taking this second map and taking us to a full best of three. That last map will be Haven. Phase did win that coin flip and they chose Defense Haven. Baby Bay, common angle here. No one's watching oh, no, it. Man. Oh man, your boy Dre thought he had it. He also used the showstopper too. Walls out. Oh, that hurts. That one certainly is going to sing. Marv is going to be here on the flank and he's going to catch one, but not catch the second. Eco in a 1v1 battle now against Corey. And oh, he didn't see him. He didn't see him in the corner. Eco actually got the better of him there. I'm shocked that he didn't see him at the corner of the screen. Just goes to show how focused he was on who could potentially jump out. Spike is now down. Two players left alive in a 3v2 in favor of 100 Thieves. Zachary around the flank will run right into Venerated. Bang him up a little bit. And there's no angle or no player, I should say, rather, that is available for Zachary to res to bring them back into contention here and even the odds. So get onto the site. Here comes the Hunter's Fury. So Rock is going to force some players back now. Smart play to just try and put some fear in them. But again, while that's going on, Rock is going to be stuck in that Hunter's Fury spot in that phase. And he has no choice there but to accept the shots from Hiko. And that is going to lead to 100 Thieves getting the win. 7-5 conclusion on the attack for 100 Thieves actually would be great for them, as you've been mentioning, Gaskin. And you can really see the difference between both like phase 100 thieves and then the likes of sentinels that we saw earlier and, and gen g as well like both of these teams just look very rough around the edges there's a lot of like very small minor mistakes i mean for example not checking the cubby before going for the showstopper like no one like someone should be checking that you should have that information you leave yourself far too vulnerable regardless whether you think you can blast back over it or not you can't just sacrifice an ultimate like that. And then B site being left so open for Hiko to comfortably walk on or teleport on. I know that he can teleport on it. It's sometimes difficult to keep tracks of an omen. But I think you have to have better angles that you're watching. So small mistakes on both sides, um, which is what is creating a pretty catastrophic game, really, where it is kind of all over the place and it is very messy, but it's entertaining viewing. A lot of entertaining games going on right now. Uh, one of those games that we were watching earlier on was Genji versus Sentinels. Currently at game three right now. No shocker there. And no shocker that 100 Thieves, after getting themselves two kills, will be able to safely go on to the B site, get Spike down. Only players left standing will be Baby Bay and Zachary. Zachary coming along the flank. Baby Bay is going to be held up here at the doorway of the teleporter room. Your boy Dre is going to be really weak. Zachary's been called out. Hiko, ever present and always annoying. Will not give Zachary a moment to breathe. Baby Bay still has not been able to get inside of this area. And as he goes over to the right side, it's Valiate who sees him and gets the headshot. Baby Bay 
Trying to just get some, uh, you know, icing on the cake here. But it's your boy Dre with three at that round. What a start for him as well, Gaskin. Don't even know if that's icing on the cake. He didn't even have any cake in that round. Like that was like the sure, moisture. It was, just, it was just the icing. You the know? moisture like, of a brownie no or something. I don't know. Some sort of other. The moisture of a brownie. Yeah, just. Actually, I, I don't know. I guess the moisture of a brownie is kind of a good thing. What's a bad thing? Like, what's a bad cake reference? Mmm. The crumbs mint, of a flapjack. The, oh, the crumbs. I was going to say anything with mint, but... Mm. I, apparently, that gets a lot of people angry. I didn't know that. People really like mint chocolate chip and... Ugh, not my jam. I mean, I'm a fan. Don't worry, chat. We can all be against him. 7-5, uh, then. Don't worry. They will. And... <laughs> yeah, you're used to it. Hiko has been doing some big things for 100 Thieves, as he often will be the one to step up. But now we've got to see what FaZe can do on their attacking half, right? They looked somewhat more comfortable in their defensive half. Pistol round is always a little bit all over the Ooh. place, but an opening pick from Corey. Peeking alone, but making it count. If you're not careful in a 1v1 against Corey, he, he peeks and it's just, it's so, so precise, all those shots that he has. Now though, Spike is going to be down. And just back away from this and give up land. Marv waiting for a player on the corner, but the damage was done with that blast pack. Zachary waiting for him. Maybe hit him with a burst of the pistol. Doesn't really work out in his favor. Valiate around the corner, but Baby Bay knew exactly where he was going to be. Venerated also knew that Baby Bay has no real legitimate options. And Corey actually challenges right through. He's going to run right on from the lamps and try and just delay this one as much as he possibly can. He was not successful in getting that halfway oh. plant, but he will be successful this time around as he kills Corey and wins a pistol, bringing this within one. Damn, I really feel like FaZe needed that one, and they looked so good for it as well. Uh, I mean, I'm going to question the decision to turn around and shoot the wall when you know that the final player is in lamps, or at least it seemed like he knew the final player was in lamps. Maybe he didn't. Maybe that actually makes more sense as to why he started shooting the wall. Uh, but either way... Venerated doing very well in the 1v1 situation. Corey was weak, and Corey had done so much that round already. He's probably pretty annoyed that it was left to him in the, the final 1v1 after the early frags, the, the two entries he was able to pick up. But really, it was on the side. It was it was Baby Bay who, who turned around on site to just try and do a little bit of damage. Maybe he had already given up in that fight. Onward we go now with guns for 100 Thieves. And a probable round win. If FaZe are able to pull this one off, it could really hurt 100 Thieves for the next round or two. Depending on what the buys are. Corey now, along with FaZe, will just go right through B-Link uh, in the market and then just send it over to this judge. This is not... What you want to see if you're a FaZe fan here. Oh, shot one, shot two. Oh, looking for three. But they needed to end the carnage, and eventually they managed to do so. Venerated, though, was waiting for them outside. Corey, though, from the distance, manages to get the kill. And now b Sight is theirs for the taking. The last two players left, Kiko and Valiate, with guns. The Phantom, a thrifty win, as I mentioned previously. Great for FaZe. Detrimental for 100 Thieves. Corey has Showstopper and Grenade to work with as well. This is not going to be an easy retake for 100 Thieves whatsoever. The first player is going to be spotted out just on the plant. Now here comes that Showstopper. He oh, doesn't no. connect and Hiko does connect with his Bulldog and will get the second onto Raucus and the retake is there for 100 Thieves. It was so promising. Corey had done so well to get that 3k. The Showstopper not connecting really was what threw that round away. FaZe just showing such moments of promise and, and moments where i get excited yeah. i'm like yes okay this is the phase and and corey is the heart of that he really is like the entries he is getting has been phenomenal if he can continue to do so and the rest of the phase squad can build around that then this really could be a squad to get excited about feel for zachary there as well by the way he just had no real options if he went over to cubby maybe could have slowed and given his team some more information but i don't even think then he had time to do so seven seven oh dear probably ow, just ow, getting ow, tagged ow, ow. up that that hurts now they don't know that they're doing that damage to him 
Uh, but with the TP, actually, could give them the idea that maybe they applied some pressure and that player could be weakened. Your boy Dre with, with this judge again. Corey, if he dies, this could spell bad news for FaZe. They're going to peek this. Rockus is there, and he shoots him right in the head. Rockus follows up. Corey did connect with that grenade, though. Oh, wow. Well, he went down. He actually got a kill with it. Now, Valley 8 falls. Marv gets that one. He goes there. He waits, though. Trigger oh. discipline from him. Finds one. Looks for the second, but doesn't connect. Marv gets 3k. FaZe put that first of the half on the board. And even though it looked a little bit dodgy from Corey, still gets that frag. Lined up that grenade to absolute perfection. That was a satisfying round for him, too. Because, yeah, he died, but, like, I still did my job. <laughs> yeah, still got, like, a, technically uh, an entry frag in a way. 100 Thieves, and though, everyone everyone take a look who at their hates money. Rays cries. So, uh, what was that? I was, I was saying, yeah, 100 Thieves Ooh. don't have a great buy here. Yeah. After that third round, because they opted to go for rifles after losing so much in the second, Zachary gets the opener onto Pride. Your boy Dre is going to teleport here, but he's going to be caught out. It's going to be a bit of raise on raise. Corey will get the spray down, but actually the nade does enough. <laughs> Just oh, shenanigans yes. across the board with those grenades. Rockets, though, that ain't no laughing matter. Beautiful shots with the Phantom. Only player now left alive is going to be their Sova. And for Venerated, it is going to be quite challenging with a classic. So FaZe have now put together two round wins. It was from a save on 100 Thieves' side. Bear that in mind. So they will buy up this time around. But FaZe, it was looking a little dire there for a moment, Dan. Uh, this is going to be the real re the real testing round, I feel. For FaZe. If they can start, if they can pick this one up and then follow through and start to continuously reset the money on the side of 100 Thieves. This game is here for the taking. It's going to be an interesting lineup from Zachary lineup. here. Just a nice little slow Viper's Pit is going to come out onto the A site, though. And I wonder whether we're going to see then the rotate as well from Hiko. Just so they can heavy stack on B, presuming that A site is going to be avoided because the Viper's Pit is in, has been initiated. At the moment, they're still going to hedge their bets and have two there, at least. Shafika wanted to use his TP to get over there quickly in case things were going to be a bit antsy. They can actually make that play happen. Also, that lineup was great uh, from Zachary, just to point that out. Ooh, nice orbital strike, too. I was going to say, that lineup actually prevented them from being able to get orb, mind you. Oh, they TP'd! It was like an action movie! They TP'd out of there right at the last second before that rocket connected onto either of them. I know that they are counting their lucky stars there. Because that could have been really, really bad with the showstopper. Now, only one player is going to be located on this A site. It is going to be Hiko. This dark cover gives him an angle right over the default spot. So he's anticipating this movement and no one is checking it. And Zachary just goes in there. 19 HP for Hiko though in this exchange. Marv is going to win it out and now venerated. Huh. No. With this Hunter Fury, Baby Bay gets weakened. Another oh. player is going to be dangerously low as well. There goes the shock dart. Doesn't get the kill. But what was looking like a rough play for venerated to make is now kind of become an option for him if he decides to go into it but with the operator it will be very expensive he knows exactly where both players are going to be located though and they're both very weak okay and marved around the old box challenges and wins but that oof, that could have been bad i mean he very almost did that with hunter's fury there wasn't much time left and it was a slither of help for the second planter as well if he had taken a bit more damage in the gunfight earlier, then that could have been a win purely out of the Hunter's Fury. But it does mean FaZe go 10-7 up, 100 Thieves, their economy isn't particularly great. And FaZe getting closer and closer to making this go all the way. And this just looks like a far better FaZe than we saw on Ascent. They have a, a much better idea, their coordination is a lot stronger. 
They're pushing together. They're peeking at the right times. Menorek does get the opener onto Zachary, though. That's not a particularly good start for phase, considering this is an eco round for 100 Thieves. No ultimates to work with on the side 100 Thieves, though. It's just going to be the Hunter's Fury for phase. Oh, yeah, boy, Dre. Nasty shots. Nasty shots from Dre. Those players are going to have to go back up. Watch out for Marv, though. He goes waiting for him. I think he heard him drop down. Does manage to get the kill, but not before Marv was able to do some damage to 100 Thieves. Two players are going to be left alive here. And don't forget, this has been an eco round. Now, the two players for FaZe are tucked away. Corey might get the kill on Pride. So mission accomplished there. Pride was going to be very weak, though. Did he need to push there? It would, would no, be my, my biggest question. No. Again, just rough around the edges. Like, various different things that are questionable from, from both of these teams. They both seem to have a habit of, of kind of throwing away rounds when they have the advantageous position. And I don't know whether that's just down to a lack of patience or lack of discipline, but something isn't quite right. Either way, though, still winnable for 100 Thieves, despite the fact it was an eco round. And Hiko now is going up against the Op. Raucus is going to have to do something very magical here. Will drop, get the spike, and get the rifle at the same time. Plant should be there There's unless no Hiko pushes. He gets aggressive. He denies. And then you might as well give up at this point. There's another player there, but Hiko gets the 3k. Huge round from him. It might have been at the expense of Venerated. He watched his teammate die before he got that frag. But that frag turned out you to know, be though, everything. Okay, so the pride push down B long actually was pretty smart if you think about it. He was weak. He's dead to rights. He only had a sheriff to work with. So if he goes down B long and dies and he died to Corey in the corner, that will tell them that they're still playing rather passive at that area. And could and with the time remaining, it didn't leave them with options. They had to play B site. So they knew that they were prepared for them. I think I'm always just looking for the silver lining here, but you do also make a great point where it's like, not uh, you also would prefer to have another gun there in that instance. Well, too, I mean, right? like I'm fine with him pushing down long, but he maybe could have just waited in the cubby he was rather than pushing out and going, maybe being a little bit more with the, the information he's trying. He was being a little bit too greedy, I would argue. But you are completely right. I mean, there are positives to it. Any information gained is good info. So you are completely right in that instance. And I, I'm completely okay with that argument against. And it does mean the 100 Thieves get their eighth on the board and slow down this bit of phase momentum we've seen. Corey has Showstopper available for him. And actually, it's quite a heavy set of ultimates available for phase. Yeah. Like, this sh should be the round for them when you look at the ults that are available. It's I'm sure that, that is that not where he wanted that cyber cage to go, but it's okay, baby babe. We'll talk about it later. A cheeky little play from Hiko with the teleport. Warp back in. They were not expecting it. Hiko! Hiko gets three! The damage has been done. That hurts. That hurts so much for FaZe. 20 seconds, though. Pride on the flank. Looking to pincer this. Rockus needs to be very careful here. He will get called out. He has a spike. If he dies, they will not be able to get this down, and he can safely go in for the peak. Hiko, Hiko, Hiko. Yeah, FaZe had four ultimates, but 100 Thieves had Hiko as an ultimate in himself when he's playing. All guns blazing. At least that round. Jeez. Great spray down, and he's having a brilliant game here, Hiko. Knowing that their tournament life is on the line. As a reminder, loser of this series is out of groups. The winner is not yet through. We'll still have to win one more match to progress into the playoffs. China win took down FaZe earlier. We saw 100 Thieves lose to Immortals. And also uh, an update on the Immortals China win match. Uh, Immortals did win 13-9 and 13-4 so it will be china win that will meet up against either of these teams phase had already squared off against them before heard it was a very hard fought game under thieves yet to play had to deal with immortals in that last game which they just had their way with them venerated gives up that angle for a moment there 
some kills starting to come through Corey oh. is going to go down which will certainly sting this phase roster losing their ace that player that will always come up clutch but thankfully marv hey man well done for marv now the orbital strike where is it going to land right in the corner venerated can get out of there will get beaten up though around 50 hp 35 seconds remaining raucous 1v2 no armor to work with and no choice but to drop down so they hear that and because of that visual cue he go freely pushed up on there he had a teammate to trade out in case it didn't go his way all tied up 10 to 10 phase have let this lead slip away gaskin I think that was unfortunate um really that he picked up the gun and it had to be reloaded because it gave the audio cue and gave him away i think if he knew that that gun had to be re reloaded he probably wouldn't have picked it up i don't know it's one of those tough decisions where you want to give yourself as much of an advantage as possible to try and yep. be ahead of the game and not give all that information to the other team but yeah he could go in off here. And 12. he like he is having the game of all games the game that 100 thieves needed they don't want this to go to a best of three and this to go to Haven. They want to get this done in a 2-0 fashion. And maybe that's why we're seeing the aggression now as Pride pushes out, gets the opener onto Raucus. Uh, makes things a bit more difficult in this next round for FaZe. FaZe now scrambling to figure out what they want to end up doing. The op is going to be weakened. Ooh, so Venerated will go back. If they can get a res off, they will be able to contend for this both smokes are out just preventing them from getting any kind of vision your boy dre gets killed through that now zachary bringing raucous back into the fold and b side being up you got 50 seconds remaining here you don't necessarily need to invest into b site you can go over to a if you choose to and i think that is what 100 thieves is thinking they're gonna do but little do they know that the entirety of face are going to be tucked away over at the B site. And if they get this plant off, I think that, I think, I think they, or I think 100 Thieves just hold on to their weapons I here. think that was the decision that was made a lot sooner. Yeah. I think that sprint over towards A was, they're all here at B. Let's save our weapons. We can't afford to lose this economy. True. Yep. And I feel like in that round, 100 Thieves tried to commit too much to deny the res. They, they got the opening pick. They knew that the res was available. And then they, they held the aggressive angle. But it's a vulnerable angle when you do push up there on B short, just outside of hookah. And then after the wall had come out, a great molly, again, just to, to try and deny that plant. But then, yet again, they left themselves vulnerable from the push coming from Fountains. And after that, I feel like you, you just... Take your losses there and say, okay, well, we haven't been able to deny the res. Let's go back. And it goes back to a 5v5 situation. At least that res isn't going to be as healthy as us. He's not going to have the 50 armor. But 100 Thieves now having to retreat that round just to save the weapons. And FaZe take an 11-10 advantage. And I mean, I wonder whether this could potentially even be an OT game. We have already seen one four phase today where they lost 17-15 to China Went. That was on Haven as well. So if this does go to a best of three and goes all the way, it will be a revisit there for FaZe who have played plenty of it today. Say what you want about both of these teams, but they've made this match very exciting. I've quite enjoyed seeing these squads clash against one another, try to outsmart each other with their compositions. I don't really feel like the Valiate on the Viper has been that big of a problem like it was on Ascent. So maybe they figured that one out. The one ways, though, will constantly cause problems for the B or the A mid push. What we can see from Hiko here. I'm just going to gain a little bit of information in showers. Yeah, well, there's huh. the information. No, that was a, a short. That was a short. Oh, he so went to he, short. Yeah, so he TP'd a short and he got met with some bullets. One player is going to be there guaranteed. Hunter Fury out now for Venerated. Doesn't connect with anyone. Doesn't find any targets. Hiko, though, through the Hunter's Fury. Distraction kills Corey. And if Valiate comes through this smoke, he might surprise one or two people, but the rocket doesn't blow up. Two kills exchanged for FaZe. Hiko, though, still going to be alive and very much a problem for FaZe to have to deal with. Pride on the flank. 
Marv has up. the lineup with that Molly. Oh no, they actually run right oh. into each other. But Marv with the headshot, they both had to bring out their gun at the wrong possible time. So the Molly is now down and it's going to just cause more and more of a delay. It's clearing up and they will get in there to try and fake this one out. Raucous, a beautiful shot, gives them this win. Venerated will not be able to get away in time and the op goes the way of the Dodo. Match point for FaZe Clan. Yeah, and no, I mean, looking at 100 Thieves money here, what do they have to offer? They were able to save for a round, so a couple of players should be somewhat healthy. For FaZe though, only one now away from the match and taking this to a best of three. I mean, that is a great response after a pretty disappointing ascent. Oh yeah. I do see phantoms available on the side of 100 Thieves. And of course, they will be forcing up anyway, regardless. I just don't know what their armor was like. Uh, there we go. Okay, they, their money was, was good. And they are still going to have the op available to them. So not too detrimental. I was a little bit concerned after losing a couple of rounds on the bounce. But thankfully, they had a bank balance saved because of that one round where they did opt to ju yep. jump back to A site, really. So shows how important it was that they cut their losses early. Yeah, it's like a one act, you know, begets another, which is the reason why they managed to buy up in this critical round, the last one. Most teams in this instance would with the way that this game has gone, would actually be struggling on the economy. Maybe some Spectres or Stingers or a Bucky to try and get a little uh, cheeky. Doesn't work out, though, for FaZe in that regard. But what does work is that they have this match point. Now, bear in mind that if Baby Bay gets a kill, a Neural Theft will reveal everything that 100 Thieves are doing. But for FaZe, they're just stacked by B Long. And that shot was so close. Fire in the hole, oh. though. Venerated. He had a fire in his hole. There you go. Nice shot. That's going to be three. And right then and there, 100 Thieves hold on and don't allow this game to go to a match three. Venerated. What a beast. Did you just say fire in his hole? Well, he fired and he shot him in his hole, his face. Okay, oh, okay no, just his face hole. Oh, okay. No, just wanted a little his bit. His face clar hole. Clarification. 12 yeah. 11, and I'm invenerated. Just absolutely. Look, see, hole. face hole. Look at that shot. See, is ridiculous, it was a headshot. Ridiculous, by the way. Like, right in the mouth, as you say, in the face hole. And uh, 12 11 now. 30 kills for Hiko, 20 for venerated. Like, some boys stepping up here. But they need to go clutch here in the final round before we potentially go to OT. Money good for FaZe here. They don't have to worry about anything. No weak buys on either side. So it's going to be a full-on normal full buy round on both sides. Neural Theft is going to be available for FaZe. Um, Orbital Strike was one away from what I saw as well. So maybe these orbs could be big, but Valier, he gets aggressive. And that's going to give the opening pick to FaZe. Well, now this is going to put FaZe in a great spot. They'll get onto this A site now. Hiko holding this one off, and I really like how they got aggressive past the site. So players would go inside of lamps and just try and tuck away inside of there, and you don't really see that level of aggression. Like, everyone will kind of just play back, but now that they've managed and Marv was the player that made that play happen, he'll take out the op. This is a winnable opportunity for phase granted pride could be spoiler here but he is not it's only going to be your boy trey and phase clan hold on for dear life here in the phase valorant invitational